Hello and welcome everybody to yet a new video. Today we have a new focus chat and the topic of today's focus chat is the personal responsibility model uh, or responsibility process created by Christopher Avery. And in order to dive deeper into this topic, I have as usual with me Adi. Hi Adi. Hello. So I actually think I learned about personal responsibility process from you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where you found out about it. Well, um, you know, my good friend, uh, Eric Talbum, who uh, you had a com recorded conversation on uh, this channel um, a while back. He was uh, a very big uh, fan of Christopher Avery. He even invited him over for some workshops in Belgium. And um, that's where I know it from. And um, it's really nice way to look at, uh, at responsibility, I think. Okay. Um, and I think it's useful to start from the beginning. What, what is the goal of this process? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think it depends on where you're coming from. Basically, the end goal is, as it says, responsibility, becoming responsible of what you're doing and of your life. So it's, does, it doesn't have anything to do with software. <laughs> I mean, this topic is a lot broader. It's, it can be applied to anything. But it, it can also be applied very well in situations where you had a trauma, uh, psychological trauma and uh, to understand where you are um, so I think uh, it's useful to to know where you could go and to uh, it's it can be a very good uh, model of self-analysis and reflection since I've learned about uh, the personal responsibility process one thing that I noticed is my response to feedback and how it goes through these phases mm -hmm. and how in time I managed to go through these phases much faster uh, than than before but I still know that I'm going through these phases it may take one second instead of 15 minutes or an hour <laughs> as it used to be but now it's uh, it's much faster so this is one area where I've noticed it applies really well in terms of software we won't talk about trauma uh, today, although I know some traumas for software developers. Maybe we'll talk about those a little bit. But I think it's more interesting to see about this process, how it would apply for, let's say, day-to-day -day decisions, team interactions, interactions with managers. This is where I've seen this process apply a lot in every day in software development. Do you agree? Yeah, of course, of course. It applies in software development, in management, in creating your own company, startups. Uh, yeah, where, wherever you want. E even in maybe in taking uh, business decisions and head taking strategic decisions or taking decisions about yourself. What do I want to learn? How, how do I want to, what, what's my career plan and so on? Precisely. And you mentioned, Eric, I actually did a fun uh, role play <laughs> mm -hmm. with, uh, with Eric, where I would, was playing uh, a developer going through these phases, basically, and he was trying to push me to responsibility. So if you are interested in seeing a short version of, of this you can, and the practical one, you can see, uh, you can watch that short video. All right, so let's start to explain a bit the process. First of all, what's, uh, what's it fundamented? I remember that uh, I think Christopher Avery did a lot of research for this, right? Yes, uh, in fact, he <laughs> this uh, whole concept starts from his professor, my or mentor professor, who started the the idea of studying responsibility in the um, uh, for for humans, 
and he continued doing this as well and i think all in all it's uh, something before writing the book which is called the same the personal responsibility process there were summed up something around 35 years of study on the topic right so that's why it's it's really impressive it's not just a book someone wrote it's really really well studied uh, with uh, for many many years with uh, well uh, quite a few professionals focusing on this topic all right so this just to to make sure we know how how well studied this is how well researched it is all right mm -hmm. And we see this picture on the screen, um, it starts on the bottom, you see denial, on the top you see responsibility. And then uh, we have a bunch of things, lay blame, justify, shame, quit, obligation. We notice that denial and quit are in grey on the right side, while lay blame, justify, shame, obligation are on the left side. Um, and all these have meaning, so it's not <laughs> like this just to look nice, it's like this because it, it means something. Exactly, yes. And I think the way I think it's easiest to, uh, to explain this is to go through a simple example, right? Maybe pick mm -hmm. a and feedback would be one, so, so let's yes. imagine you are a programmer, you wrote some code, implemented a task, and then somebody comes to you and says, look, that code produced a lot of problems in production. And what can we do so that this doesn't happen in the future? By the way, this would be a good way of giving feedback. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. It, it, it should be even more specific, so it's not enough to say a lot of problems, you should be specific about the problems. Now let's imagine this context, you are in this context, you are getting this type of feedback. What is denial? Yeah, so denial means that I would say, no, there's no problem. <laughs> right. My, my code is perfect, everything worked well. Uh, I don't see anything wrong, even if it's obvious that something's wrong, you don't see anything. And it's not lying to yourself, <laughs> it's, it's really not seeing it. Yeah, uh, and this is an important thing um, about these steps, they, they are natural steps towards responsibility, right? Yeah, and this is, well, he explains a lot about denial in the book, um, Christopher Avery, and why why we have it historically and so on. But uh, it, it's um, a matter of protecting oneself. Yeah, and I can imagine that. So there are all kinds of emotional protections that we build up uh, to avoid getting hurt basically. Mm -hmm. So I was talking earlier about trauma, if you worked a long time, or if this character that we are talking about worked for a long time in a company where every mistake was punished, then um, that would create the, the automatic defense of denial. Mm -hmm. So when you go into another environment where feedback is actually meant for you to improve and it's not meant to punish you, you still uh, are in the same mindset. It's very difficult to switch from that. So that denial is then a common response in, in this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in fact, uh, what other studies show, I think, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but he might say this as well. Other studies show as well that when something uh, negative comes to you, even if it's well, very well created, written, expressed feedback, still our emotional uh, initial reaction is very similar as if a bear would attack you in yeah. the forest. 
So that's why uh, it's a matter of uh, protecting uh, yeah. oneself. So you are symbolically running away from the situation. That's that's what's happening. You are not running physically away, but it's the same action, only in your mind instead of with your full body. Yeah. Okay. The second one, lay blame. So I'm getting over this. I'm not denying anymore. Maybe because they are showing me, you know, but look. <laughs> Logs or it's yeah. not working. Look, it's, uh, it Ex takes a long time. Exactly. So the next thing would be lay blame. What yeah, it, it would be, you, you, well, it, it's your fault. You didn't put enough memory on the, on the machine or... Um, it's it's the database fault because um, it, it doesn't work properly. It's the other team's fault because they didn't test it enough. Uh, it's it's your fault because you you didn't uh, look at it with uh, enough uh, attention. It's anyone else's fault than yourself. Right. So it's somebody else or something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It can be something else. Of course, there can be. You, you can also uh, think about this. But there's a big difference. There's a difference here between lay blame and justify, uh, because justify the next step is about circumstances, while lay blame is typically um, about people or yeah situations. But uh, justify is about circumstances. All right. So I lay blame on others and I say, okay, so you didn't install the right database, you didn't mm -hmm. use the right whatever. And then there is even more proof that mm -hmm. this doesn't happen. I'm going to justify. What is justify? Well, you know, I had, was uh, under a lot of pressure and you told me to deliver this, but I had the headache. And you know that uh, that, that was that day when it was really hot and the air conditioning wasn't working and I wasn't feeling myself and uh, I couldn't eat because uh, well, and so on. So you can come up with all of these situations to justify why you did something or you didn't do something or whatever. Yeah. And usually, when I talk about this, just jokingly, you can talk about things like weather outside, or you know, it wasn't sunny, and the moon phases were wrong, or... <laughs> yes, it can be anything. This reminds me, uh, ju just a quick aside, it reminds me of um, um, something that we both enjoy, Dexter's Laboratory, and... Mm -hmm. There's one episode in which he wakes up and it's like, today is a good day for science. No, <laughs> today is a good <laughs> because the moon was not in the right phase or something like that. <laughs> exactly. So then, yeah, he destroyed the world because of that. But yeah, that's something else. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and once again, just to be very clear, these are normal phases. So, mm -hmm. it, so it's not, you shouldn't feel... <laughs> weird because this happens to you you should just know that they happen and the key here is to i think you, at least from my perspective is to practice this so that you get to responsibility faster mm -hmm. yeah there's a very nice thing christopher avery is saying uh, when you know he's also doing therapy or uh, doing consulting and when someone says something like well you know, I felt bad that I had to justify and I started laying blame and so on. And the only thing that he says is, congratulations, you're human. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. So, so, so don't feel bad if this happens to you. We are just showing you, you know, know that these are the phases. They are normal. But you know that by practicing those, you can get to responsibility faster. That's... All right, so somehow I'm passing over Justify, mm -hmm. right? Maybe I realize that it's not, well, one day passes and I realize, oh, maybe there was something about me <laughs> or about mm -hmm. what I did and it wasn't something about um, the weather or whatever else. So 
I'm going to shame. What is shame? Well, I'm such a stupid. I never focus on my work. I couldn't even create that simple task that I was supposed to do. I knew how important it was and they told me and I didn't make what I should have. I'm not good at anything. Things like that. Okay. And um, yeah, and this happens a lot. Uh, once you realize that you have no excuses. Mm -hmm. It's it's a common thing. And now we, we see the next step, which is quit. And it's on the right side. Why is it on the right side and what does it mean? Well, when you're in denial or in quit, it means that you will never be able to get to responsibility because you get out of the, let's say, responsibility process. You, If you quit, what quit means is that you stop caring, you give up because there's too much pain on because of shame or uh, even the one on the top obligation or justify because but typically shame or obligation is so too much pain to to handle and you say no i quit you know, i don't care anymore yeah so in this case it it might be something like i will never be able to be a good developer in this company you know, i'm not good enough so okay I... so i don't care i will just do whatever and you know i'll do whatever i can i don't care about anything if they will uh, fire me, that's fine. I don't care, you know. Right. I, I'll come later to work. They don't like me anyway. Uh, I'll leave earlier. And if they say anything, I don't care. Whatever. Okay. So this is what quit means. And in this situation, as you said, you are going away from the responsibility. By the way, quit is once again, a perfectly normal response because you cannot take responsibility for everything. Exactly. Right. So there are situations where indeed you cannot do ev anything about those situations. And the healthy solution is to say, OK, I, that's as much as I can do. And, and that's it. Yeah, or, and even it's recommended, even Christopher Avery writes about this, it's recommended that you quit and you choose where you want to be responsible, but it should be a very uh, clear action from your side. And conscious, yeah. yeah. And okay. conscious, conscious action. Yeah. All right. So I'm not quitting. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm still feeling the shame. I'm getting over the shame, and the next one is obligation. What would be the example here? It's anything that has to do with the the words you should. You should write better code. You should focus on your task. You should be a better programmer. You should be a better person. You should be a better team player. You should anything. So when you hear should, that's the typical word that forms obligation. And here Christopher Avery explains in very deep detail about how the society that we live in today is focused around obligation and how that is extremely bad for everyone. Mm. That's because if you are in an obligation phase and you stay in an obligation phase for too long, you could quit mm -hmm. very well. So you don't care about it anymore. And it's not just about the job. It can be about your life, about your family. It can be about your friends. It can be about anything. And um, there is this is educated. This is what uh, Christopher Avery is saying. It's mostly educated and it has to do a lot of uh, a lot with our educational system uh -huh. worldwide. And also with the um, society pressure about what you should do. 
one example though that comes into my mind and i'm curious if this is obligation or not is when you think i should write unit tests because that's what is asked of me i yeah. should follow guide coding guidelines because they are written and somebody checks me on those guidelines exactly. i should refactor the code because somebody's uh, pestering me about it or exactly exactly and it's your obligation to do that you don't feel that there's a value in it you feel that you need to do it because you are checked or because it's, it's how you should do so it depends on the person depends on each person yeah so you, i could give two examples but they're not uh, at all uh, all the situations two examples when uh, you could have the obligation very well ingrained in your uh, in, in how you were educating your education so that you will feel that you need to do that because someone told you like a boss so it's the the pressure of authority um, or you could you couldn't care a lot about authority but because everyone someone checks on you you are obligated to do that otherwise you wouldn't do that you don't respect those guidelines or rules and that that's that's the idea uh, but you don't understand the value of them you mm -hmm. or even more you you consider there is no value in those rules or guidelines or practices i can imagine i i know one at least who is very that is very common which is uh, attending daily scrum yes i think most of the developers who attend daily scrum meetings attend them because they should attend them yes and they don't know the value and they don't see the value and so on yeah sometimes there is no value mm -hmm. so yeah so that could be a problem of course <laughs> so we need to listen carefully to what they're saying yeah it depends a lot on the context so setting daily scrum meetings correctly it's actually pretty difficult uh, mm -hmm. so yeah all right and i'm getting over this i don't feel that i should you know so let's recap a bit i wrote some code that wasn't that bad that was uh, quite bad introduced some bugs in production and i realized that maybe if i would have written some unit tests or followed some rules some coding guidelines um co-reviews did some pair programming and then i start doing those out of obligation right what would be the contrast between being in this phase of obligation and being in responsibility you would choose to apply some practices some tools because you understand the value and you choose the to it you consider and you choose you have your it in your power to use these because you understand the va the benefits of what you are doing because you value the importance for your job for your craft for your skills for your colleagues you understand the impact for your, the product you, you work on and so on so is this more like a can be a pragmatic thing like sure or it can be a moral thing i imagine of course of course i think if we'd go into morals that would be very complicated yeah yeah but it can be because you know there they are the two i'm thinking about software craft now as a movement and i think there are two sides of this one of them is you should do this because it's the right thing to do because otherwise you're not living up to being a good programmer and so on yeah so, that's the prescriptive one and which the, drives more toward obligation yeah the moral argument more or less let's say uh, and the other one is the pragmatic one which is we don't want to have bugs we want to deliver good code and in order to do that we know these five techniques 
these are mm -hmm. the ones that we know. But if we find other techniques, we are always ready to, to switch to those. It's, yes. We are always open to other things, but it's... Yes, but when either way, um, it's in, the, in our language. When we hear, I should write tests, I should go to write better code. So if, if someone says like something like that in your team, uh, I should go and continue the work. It the words that people are saying means a lot. So mm -hmm. that that into my years uh, says that that person is into the ob an obligation phase of this process. Right, and to contrast this, so I write the code that I'm writing. I write tests for it. Mm -hmm. I choose to do that. Nobody's watching me. I, yes. I choose to write tests because I know they help me write code that works. They help me retest the code. They help me understand the code six months later when I look back at it and try to make some changes. Um, this is why I'm doing these things. It's not because I have to. And if you would show me a better way of doing that than writing tests, I'd be ready to switch to that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, offer so me the same value and then I can switch to. Yeah, that's the, the pragmatic approach to, to it. And it's very contextual, right? Because you need to understand that as well, that it sometimes makes sense or it doesn't make sense to use some tools or some practices. So that's that's the idea. Right. Maybe that's why obligation is bad. Because if someone I know from upper management says you should do that, but you know that it doesn't make sense to use the practice or the tool, you are in an obligation phase. And maybe you could even go into the quit phase when you see those, I don't know, hundreds of unit tests written just because they need to have a certain pass rate. Yeah. All right. But we talked a, a bit about the technical practices. Um, I think it might be interesting to look at another thing. Um, and that is things like impediments or so we, I often notice when I'm doing retrospectives with teams that are new to this mm -hmm. thing, that they go through these phases. So we find yes. an impediment, we find something like, okay, um, we didn't finish what we planned. Mm -hmm. um, and then they start saying, oh, but we didn't get the specifications. The specifications were not clear. Uh, we couldn't estimate properly and so on and so forth. So that would yes. be another example. How does responsibility look in, in these situations? This is a thing I try to do with teams when they are kind of ready to go through this process and to have a workshop on the personal responsibility process to, to, to say and to show them that there are things they should focus on and they should understand it's their uh, part in it and if they want to improve something they need to act or they should choose to act even better phrased and there are things that maybe they could quit now but for the moment and somewhere in the future they could choose to go on them uh, and, and improve those as well so it's you need to choose what's more important for you to do and the the worst thing in in these situations in uh, for impediments is laying blame mm -hmm. which is what we see always it's it's always about someone else's team, someone else. So if it's a team retrospective, it will be about someone else outside the team. It will either it will be about the product owner, about the requirements, about the 
the I don't know ecosystem, the test environments, uh, the laptops, the anything it can be anything. The other and team that was living. supposed to deliver you something. And... Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, and it's it's very easy to explain why because there is a pressure that you feel and the the easiest way to to uh, to have less pressure or even feel good is to consider that someone else was it was for was uh, to blame for this situation yeah and the responsibility way to deal with this would be okay i have this little thing that we can improve in our mm. bubble let's say in our team yeah. we can communicate better with the other team we can ask for uh, whatever we need before the sprint actually starts uh, we can try to apply B bdd example mapping to clarify the requirements we can so there are a number of things that you can always do that are under your control and well one of them is always to tell your manager i mean if you of course cannot find a way or it's something let's say about the office that you cannot change or somebody needs to sign uh, acquisition orders for laptops or things like that then tell your manager that's the least of the actions that you can do right um all right there's a uh, there's a story that i like to s tell you know, to close this um mm -hmm. and that's kent beck told the story at one point um that he went to a meeting with um sales and he was in the room, I don't know exactly why, but it was basically one of the, um, like, every three months or so, they would report their their progress on sales and stuff like that. And the salespeople, so each of them got up and said, okay, I had this target, I achieved it or I didn't achieve it. <laughs> Uh, this is what I'm planning next, and then sit down. And this took like, you realize, like five, ten minutes for each person. I assume they were giving some more details. But uh, Ken Beck's reaction was very interesting. He said, well, I was very surprised because if those people were developers, <laughs> they would have started, oh, but the market changed and mm -hmm. there were all these things and the competition is coming after us and when i estimated what uh, our sales uh, i didn't expect the market to change in this way and, and so on <laughs> and it was very funny to contrast these two worlds uh, a world where you have responsibility and it's not you don't even discuss about something else, you know? I mean, you either yes. got to your goal or not, achieved your target or not, and that's everything you need to say. There's nothing more than that. Well, you can talk then about how to improve or things like that and what to do next. And, but in terms of what happened is simply we did it or not. <laughs> Whereas with developers, we have this recurrent story of, okay, we estimated this, but back then the estimation was about something that was not completely clear and the world changed around us and then something else arrived and so on. And, and then our estimation is completely different and it's the blame of somebody else. <laughs> and to me, this is like the, the fundamental or quintessential story about the difference between responsibility and, you know, justify, play blame <laughs> that is so common with, with developers. So let me give you some news. Um, 
everybody else, not only developers, works in conditions of change. Mm -hmm. Things change <laughs> around them, but uh, they deal with it because that's the job. So that would be for me responsibility for software developers. I like to stop hearing <laughs> things like uh, yeah, we got over our estimate because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah, it's true. You either did it or did not, and that's where the discussion ends. And the rest is for you to figure out how to do better next time. It's as simple as that. All right, anything else you'd like to say in the, in the conclusion? I think uh, a very good way to to start is analyze oneself about uh, this process. Uh, maybe read the book; it's really good, and uh, I think it will be really good benefits to anyone out there, no matter what you do. It's really, really nice book and really nice process. It's it's really clear. It's really. Um, really well explained and um, very close to reality, I would say. Yes, and I would add to that one thing that helped me is to identify these phases in my own emotional state. And then I learned that I'm going through these phases and that's okay. And then I learned how to go through these phases faster under typical, well, under circumstances that I'm, that are most common for me. And that helped a lot. All right. That's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. What do you think about this process? Is it something that can help you? Will, do you want to learn more? And if you do, um, do you have any more questions? Are there any other things related to this that you might want to, to learn? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for your nice comments in the recent videos, by the way. We really enjoy those. We have some very nice comments. I encourage you uh, to leave us comments, more, more of you. We also started to answer those comments. so. Now we can have more of a conversation. Um, give us a like, a subscribe, tell other people about what you've learned. And as always, it's great to have you uh, with us. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, remember to think, design and work smart.